The U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has resigned from office in a letter to the U.S. President. The Secretary of Defense said he was stepping down because his views were not aligned with that to, of the President. The announcement also came a day after President Trump decided to withdraw ground troops from Syria. Mattis said he will step down at the end of February 2019. He said, and I quote, because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours uh, on these and other subjects, I believe it is is right for me to step down from my position. In his letter, Matt has reiterated uh, his core belief in America's alliance and partnership and America's need to be resolute and unambiguous in challenging countries such as China and Russia. Shortly before the resignation, President Trump had announced that the Defense Secretary would be retiring uh, by February next year. After completing two years, Trump thanked Mattis for helping his administration with the purchase of new fighting equipment and helping with other countries as well. And in fact, the retired four-star general had served in the military for four decades before joining Trump's cabinet. Mattis joins a long list of former Trump administration senior figures who have either quit or been forced out. And joining us to talk a little bit more about this is Ambassador Arun Singh, who has served in Afghanistan and also, of course, uh, in the United States as well. Ambassador Singh, thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Your thoughts about this, uh, about this uh, decision of the Trump administration, particularly Mr. Trump, President Trump himself, of leaving Afghanistan and Syria. So in two successive days, there have been two shocks. And while his cabinet uh, is in a complete disarray with this decision, how do you see this panning out? So there is a little difference between the Syrian and the Afghanistan announcement. In Syria, he's saying that he's withdrawing the 2,000 troops in Syria completely. In Afghanistan, what he has said is that they are drawing down 50% from 14,000 to 7,000. So it is not a complete withdrawal at this stage. That having been said, the important thing would be what is the signal that the Taliban and other opponents of the Afghan government read into this? Because in 2009, for example, when President Obama had announced a major increase in US troops in Afghanistan, he had simultaneously given a fixed date by which these troops would be taken out. And therefore, a lot of people had interpreted that the Taliban and other opponents will essentially see that the U.S. did not have staying power in Afghanistan. Therefore, today's decision that has been indicated from the U.S. could be interpreted by the Taliban and others as a signal that the U.S. is leaving, that the U.S. has been to leave early, and therefore in the various negotiations that they're having with the U.S. and others, including with the U.S. Uh, Special Representative uh, Zalmay Khalilzad, they could just play for time and test out uh, President Trump's uh, patience. Right. And eventually the question would be, how well does the Afghan government and its institutions and its security structures right. hold in this situation? Right, absolutely, Ambassador Singh. And the other question then, of course, is that is this an admission that, uh, you know, the U.S. policy in Afghanistan has failed? Uh, you know, there have been successive peace talks where it seems that the Taliban is dominating how this process unfolds. Uh, even uh, the admission, the fact that they wanted the troop withdrawal and that Trump, uh, as early as this year, had said that we are not going to be talking to the Taliban. And what, what they're doing exactly is the opposite of that. So that would depend on what anyone sees as being the objective of U.S. policy. Many in the U.S. had argued that the objective was essentially to go after the Al-Qaeda and those in Al-Qaeda who were bent upon targeting the United States. And after action against Osama bin Laden and the others, that the Al-Qaeda had basically been decimated in Afghanistan and to that extent U.S. objective had been met. But in the process of U.S. intervention in Afghanistan and then when they intervened in Iraq, U.S. took on a state-building effort. And if they were trying to reorder governance in Iraq, they could not say that they would not pay attention to governance in Afghanistan. Therefore, governance and state-building became an objective of U.S. policy. But many in U.S. have been opposed to that. So one can argue clearly that the effort that the U.S. undertook to support governance and state-building, it is not seeing it through to the end. And therefore, building Afghan institutions, governance institutions, security institutions in an enduring manner, which they should have. Right, right. All right.
But also, Ambassador Singh, then the question, of course, remains uh, with this troop withdrawal. Will uh, Afghanistan finally see peace? Or will this, of course, open the doors for Taliban that is a terror outfit to so many people around the world, uh, give them legitimacy? And how does this pan out for India? I think this signal of troop withdrawal at this stage was contribute to instability in Afghanistan. Already the Taliban, ISIS and others have been taking action on the ground. The Afghan government and its forces have been under pressure. There has been a large number of casualties this year among Afghan security forces. So there will be instability and a sense of insecurity created in Afghanistan. But then we have to see, following the troop withdrawal, which is popular with uh, President Trump's base, core base in the United States, if the U.S. steps up its assistance to the Afghan government, then that can help the government endure. But if it does not do that, then clearly the U.S. is not providing that kind of support that is needed. Now, if instability is created in Afghanistan, clearly that will have an impact on India and we'll have to see how it evolves because we are doing a large number of economic development projects in Afghanistan. And that has been done in the framework of broad security paradigm provided by the United States and the Afghan government. And if that is challenged, then our ability to do those projects and programs would certainly be affected. And if there is again insecurity in Afghanistan, Afghanistan can once again, like before 9-11, be used to prepare people for terrorist attacks in India. So that is again something that India will watch. So instability right. in Afghanistan is clearly something not in our interest. But the only thing I'd add there, that to some extent, Pakistan too would have to be concerned. Right. Because while Pakistan supports the Taliban and would like the Taliban to come back into control in Afghanistan, if there is instability in Afghanistan, that can create challenges for Pakistan too. Right. All right, Ambassador Singh, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us this evening and sharing your thoughts about what the troop withdrawal from the, of the United States means for Afghanistan and for the neighborhood, including for us here in India.